the research that we published in this paper came about because we were interested in knowing if the uh, rumen microbial communities, the microbes found in uh, rumens of ruminants, were the same all across the globe, or whether there were regional differences, if there were differences due to the uh, ruminant host species or the diet that the animals are consuming. And of course, we're interested in that as scientists because it's actually a really interesting fundamental question but uh, it also has practical applications. One of the big projects that we've got going here at Ag Research is trying to find ways of reducing methane emissions from uh, ruminant animals. And obviously, if the methane producing microbes are the same all across the globe, it means that a solution found in one place can be applied right across the planet. So the rumen is a modified foregut in ruminant animals. Now, ruminants eat feed like grass, but they can't use that. They require the microbes that are resident in the rumen to ferment that feed. And it's the products of that fermentation the ruminants take up and convert to all of the products that we like to produce in New Zealand, like milk and meat, wool, velvet, leather. So that rumen, the rumen, is the engine room of New Zealand's agricultural economy. And in that fermentation, when the feed is converted to these useful products, there's a byproduct formed, which is methane gas, which of course has climate change implications. That's actually one of the reasons why we are interested in understanding more about the microbes that are resident in ruminants, in the ruminal ruminants around the planet. And so overall, at the end of the collection period, we decided to include in our analyses 742 samples in total from 32 different animal species, mostly cattle, sheep, deer and goats, but also some more exotic foregut fermenters such as alpaca. And all of these samples stemmed from 35 different countries and were provided by 140 different collaborators working in 73 different institutions. So a truly global research effort. We found that the bacterial communities were very similar across the samples despite the stemming from different animal species eating quite a wide variety of diets and what was interesting was that the 30 most abundant genus level groupings of bacteria were found in over 90% of the samples and made up over 90% of the bacterial community data and if we dig a little bit deeper and look at the seven most abundant bacterial level groupings, we found that those made up over two thirds of the bacterial community data. So as well as answering our questions about the influence of the host and the diet on the rumen microbial community and finding out about the universality of uh, rumen microbes, uh, we've also seen that uh, we don't know very much about the rumen microbes themselves. The ones that dominate the ruminants in the around the world are groups that we've not really studied. We don't know what they do. Uh, we don't know what their roles are in the rumen. Uh, we don't know how to get the most out of them. And uh, that represents a new challenge for us as rumen microbiologists. And another really interesting finding, of course, was that the methanogens that we see, the methane producing microbes, are the same everywhere across the planet. And that means that a technology that's developed to control those microbes anywhere should be able to be applied everywhere and therefore have an impact on controlling climate change.